Hello you guys, we are back with another Wednesday word and this is something that I have talked about before. I can't remember if I made a video on it or not a while back, but I know that I shared this word with a group of people. So whether I've made a video on it or not, it's still great that we're doing this today because the Lord has put this on my heart today to talk about again. So it is a word on expectations. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we'll get into this. So, Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much, God, for having your way in me, Lord God, and speaking the message that you want to get across to us today, Lord. God, I thank you for increasing our wisdom today through this, Lord, revealing to us areas where we have placed our trust and expectation in man, God. And I thank you, Lord, for helping me to stay focused during this word, God, and to stay on topic. And God, I just pray that you would minister to our hearts today and help us to have our expectations and our trust where they need to be, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. So in scripture, the word hope or the word expectation Depending on what translation you're reading, they're the same word, expectation and hope. In the Strong's Concordance, the, these words literally mean a cord and attachments, okay? So if you can think back to times in your life where you have hoped for something, you have expected something out of someone, you've expected them to treat you in a certain way, or you've expected them to do, to move in a certain type of way, and then things don't turn out how you expected, your hope gets deflated because you don't see what you thought you were going to see, and then you're in this moment of grieving for a bit because you didn't see what you were hoping to see. In those moments where you have experienced that, you have put your expectation and your hope into man, whether realizing it or not, there has been an attachment. You have attached yourself when you have placed an expectation on man or on a situation itself you have attached yourself to that specific thing. There has been a cord to that specific thing. And if we think about cords, when I think about cords, my mind goes to an umbilical cord. And so we know that the umbilical cord is a cord of life. The baby is attached to the mother so the baby can have all the nutrients that it needs, all the life that it needs. We know that our life source is God. He is our source. He is what gives us everything that we need, our nutrients. He is what keeps us alive. And so any time that we take our life source, where we're supposed to be attached and connected by this cord to the Lord, and we try to move it to something else. We try to attach ourselves. Maybe we think that, you know, we can be attached to the Lord, but we can also be attached to this person believing, having an expectation in them. We believe that we can attach ourselves to a situation, believing that putting our trust in this thing, when ultimately we need to forget all other expectation. We need to remove our trust from people and all of these things. And we need to make sure that we are only attached and only have this cord from us to God. So again, in simple terms, when we place our trust or our expectation in anything other than God, we have attached ourselves to this thing. And so when it doesn't play out, that thing is broken because it was never meant to be there in the first place. That thing is broken and then we experience suffering and grief because this whole time we put our trust and expectation in something where it was never meant to go in the first place. And so the Lord just wants to give us wisdom in this moment 
and give us an awareness because a lot of times we don't realize that we're doing this, but we are. And he just wants to tell us, make sure that your hope and your expectation, what you're attaching yourself to is only to me. Only put your trust in me. Only put your hope in me so that you can be only attached to me. When we're attempting to get life from man, aka when we put our expectation in man and we're attached by this cord to man, when we're attempting to get life from man, it only brings death, aka another version of death, another word that comes to my mind when I think about death is cursing. It doesn't bring life, it brings death. And so I'll read Jeremiah chapter 17, 5 to speak to that. And it says, this is what the Lord says. Cursed is the person who trusts in mankind, who attaches himself, who, who builds this cord of, of trust and expectation in mankind. Cursed is the person who trusts in mankind. Death comes to the person who trusts in mankind. He makes human flesh his strength and his heart turns from the Lord. So again, whether you realize it or not, when you do this, your heart turns from the Lord because your heart can only be, it can only have one high ruler. And the high ruler who should sit on the throne of our hearts is King Jesus, the Lord. So, again, being tethered to God is our only true life source. And we see that when we read Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8. The person who trusts in the Lord the person who puts his expectation in the Lord, the person who is attached, the person who has a cord between him and the Lord, whose confidence indeed is the Lord, is blessed. He will be like a tree planted by water. It sends its roots out toward a stream. It doesn't fear when heat comes and its foliage remains green. It will not worry in a year of drought or cease producing fruit. So in verses seven and eight, when you put your trust fully in the Lord, your expectations in the Lord, you're attached and connected to the Lord. All you hear is blessings. All you hear is life, 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 abundant life fruitfulness opposed to when we put our expect expectations in anything other than the Lord when we do that it's death it's cursing in John chapter 2 verses 24 in the passion translation I'll read this it says but Jesus did not yet entrust himself to them because he knew how fickle human hearts can be. So the Lord even tells us another reason of why we do not entrust ourselves, why we do not connect ourselves fully and make this attachment to people is because of how fickle human hearts can be. Even Jesus himself demonstrated this. The only one that Jesus was attached to and trusted himself to was the Lord God. Like who he is in flesh, but the, his father, the Lord God. And we see that again in scripture, Jeremiah chapter 17, it tells us, it's titled the deceitful heart, verse nine. And it says, the heart is more deceitful than anything else and incurable. Who can understand it? The heart is more deceitful than anything else. And so this is God's way of teaching us how to guard our heart. Just stressing the importance to us for us to be careful where we're connecting, who we're connecting ourselves to, where we're putting our trust, where we're putting our expectation. That even Jesus he guards his heart. He demonstrates him guarding his heart. 
because he knows that hearts are deceitful. So that goes, that leads us to Psalm 62. Verse 5, rest in God alone, my soul, for my hope comes from him. Rest in God alone, my soul. Trust in God alone. Trust in God alone. Put your hope in God alone. Put your expectation in God alone. Put your confidence in God alone alone. Let that minister to you today. Let the Lord identify areas in your life where you have put your trust in man. Allow the Lord to reveal those areas of your heart and allow the Lord to help you to think back on times where you've put your trust in man and you've been let down. This is, again, why it is important to live by the scripture that tells us to hide under God's wings. Hide under the Lord's wings. Let him shelter you. In this place, it's only you and God. There's only this connection between you and God. And then everything else will flow out of you and how you are to navigate in life and how you are to love others. But in this place, your heart is guarded and the Lord shows you Again, how to move, but also how to just put your confidence in him, your trust in him, and not to place your trust and confidence in people or to put your trust and confidence in wealth. Scripture that's coming to my mind. So, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And an explanation, oh, cannot talk, oh my gosh, an explanation of that would be like something that pops up on Google when I search that scripture is it says a person's heart is tied to what they value most in life. Do you value people's opinion? Do you value pleasing people? Do you value yourself and how, I mean, you should value yourself, but do you value yourself above, above God? You know, we should value God first and for, foremost, and then the Lord shows us how to value other things. But God should be our, our highest value, like what we are completely tied to, because in that Everything else is added to us. The Lord shows us how to function, okay? Like we have to be connected to the life source at all times. We cannot disconnect ourselves to him, only connected to him, only having expectations in him. Just putting your trust in God alone. I cannot say that enough. Let your heart be tied to him not to wealth, not to people pleasing, not to self, but to him and him only. So Lord, I just thank you, God, that you are helping us identify areas in our heart, Lord, that we have made other things a higher value than who you are in our life, God. I pray that we would place the highest value on you and that we would be making you our life source, Lord God. That we would not connect ourselves to anything other than you, God, knowing that when we do that, that you help us in every other area in our life, Lord. Let us trust in you at all times. Thank you, God. Lord God, if there's anything else, God, that you need me to speak about, any specific scenario, Lord Jesus, just if there's anything else, God, I just pray that you would bring that to my mind, Father, and that 
your will would be done and your words would be taught, Lord, in simplicity and understanding, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. I think that may be it, you guys. I think that may be it. Just be asking the Lord for wisdom and for him to just give you your own personal revelation of expectations. Because a lot of times the reason we experience a lot of crushing is because of these expectations that we have. And so let us just come to know Jesus more in the secret place so that we can be one with him, aligned with him, remaining in him. Um, and in that, he'll teach us everything that we need to know as we seek him. And, and, you know, it's just such a simple, it sounds so simple when it's said. A lot of the things that the Lord, like, has me speak, it always sounds so simple, but I know that it holds so much weight and understanding if we can just grab a hold of the revelation. If we can just enter into that mindset of cutting off all other Areas where we have made things a source of trust in our life. If we can just cut that off and know that God is good. And just fully connect ourselves to him and entrust ourselves to him. Like there's something about that just coming into that truth and that mindset that is very shifting. Like it can shift a lot of things in our life. And so I pray that the Lord will just give you a revelation, a personal revelation of that in your life. So I will see y'all next week with another word, unless the Lord gives me something else that he wants me to say. But again, Mondays, I usually most of the time have a Facebook live replay that I post. So if you want to follow me on Facebook so you can join those Monday morning lives, uh, you can do that by going to my website in the description and checking that out and then every Wednesday I always post a word on here so connect with me on my website subscribe to my website if you haven't done that yet um, so you can get weekly encouraging up emails and just updates stay updated with what I have going on so God bless you see y'all later have a great rest of your week